Ten minutes now for each group. Uh, I, I'm well aware, so I need even shorter answers, <laughs> a quick fire round almost. Um, just beforehand, um, just in relation to what uh, Deputy McSherry said earlier on, I was one of the people who got a phone call, and I actually don't believe it was anything to do with logistics. Uh, just me, let me put that on the record. I believe it was a former briefing, and now to this day, I believe, by the looks of things, it was selective briefing. So I would like you to reply, uh, because you're going to be here a number of times, I ex expect, in the coming months. Um, straight question. There's a lot of detail here, a huge amount of detail, and we've all gone through it. Do you believe you did anything wrong in relation to the sales process of Project Eagle? Nana. I certainly didn't do anything wrong. Oh, sorry. Do you believe that... Could, could we, you know, with hindsight, it's what, three, three, four years ago, would we have done something differently in the light of our subsequent experience? Possibly. But it would be because I believe that that's the type of organisation we are. So, that you, we learn. Do, so do you believe you could have done uh, aspects of this uh, sale better? You might have tweaked it here and there, but what I do not believe is that we would have got any different result. Okay, but stick, stick, to, stick yeah. to what I'm saying here. Yeah. Do you believe you could have done aspects of this better? Not really, no. No, so I don't think so. Everything would have, you'd have done everything the same? There might be tweaking here and there, but okay, there's but nothing, nothing significant that I think well, would have okay. changed. Okay, we're, we're, we're interested in the word tweaking. What yeah. tweaking? Uh, maybe around the documentation because that has been criticized by the CNAG we might have got into more detail on it examples. the actual sales process examples itself. yeah we leave the sales process the, the examples of documentation I think it would be uh, and again I'm not cutting across my view that minutes of meetings should record decisions and not discussions but if you get to a stage where you have discussed alternatives uh, or you have discussed different sort of pricing uh, maybe, in the f maybe we would do that in the future. Okay, but, uh, can I just make a general point about this? This quickly. was 2013, right? A loan sale. Loan sales were few and far between, okay. not just in NAMA, but point. internationally. I'm taking what you say as, uh, as read. Um, it's interesting that you say that, because my next issue is to, is to talk a little bit about was there a feeling, um, a requirement, well, not a requirement, but a, uh, a belief that this was the right time uh, because of diplomatic requirements, political pressure, uh, uh, business um, risks, was it, and the lack of ongoing quality debtor engagement, that this was the right time to get out of Northern Ireland? I think it was the right time for a number of reasons. Because we can't analyse yeah. that for yeah. the very reason you said, which is your weakness. Yeah. Because it is decisions are recorded in the minutes, but there's a big gap there as regards the logic the board put in relation to those four things, which I just outlined, which is uh, business risk, debtor engagement, political pressure, and diplomacy. Like that is not recorded anywhere for us to see if that was the logic behind the decision. I, th I think because of the weakness you outlined. Business risk, debtor engagement. Uh, fractious engagement, Th those certainly are mentioned in NAMA papers, uh, might not necessarily have been mentioned in the minutes of, of the board meeting. But it was the right time for a number of reasons. First of all, we had an interest. Secondly, uh, the, there was a, a, an increasingly fractious engagement with Northern Ireland debtors. And contrary to uh, views that have been expressed here and elsewhere, we didn't see any great evidence that the Northern Ireland economy was, was, was growing. It, 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 yes, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that what, I know. what you did was necessarily yeah. wrong. Yeah. What I'm saying is that as a committee, given the minutes that are outlined, the yeah. decision-making process across those four variables, we can't garner because yeah. it's not constructed I given know. the weakness you've outlined to I, me earlier on. I see that point, Deputy, but I mean in the extensive engagement with the CNAG, which in fairness to him is reflected in the report, we have given that rationale in terms of what okay, we we'll, we'll move on. On, um, on a, much, a much bigger point, by the way, uh, where we write to get out of Northern Ireland, now post-Brexit uh, well, 2016, we, uh, yeah, we certainly were. Being been honest with you, that's not the remit of this committee because we have to study it from the time the decision was made, so that comment is absolutely irrelevant. In relation well, to I don't think it's irrelevant, Deputy, well, well, because well, it's relevant to did we get value for well, money. No, no, uh, sorry, Mr Daly, please no, follow on right. my question. You have only certain limited time. In my opinion, it's irrelevant because the deci we're, we're analysing the decision at the time rather than post. Brexit. Yeah, was I'm in our sorry Brexit was in our decision. So you were able to predict the outcome of the referendum. At the same meeting, at the same meeting, 
on the 13th of December, where we discussed this. We had a paper in relation to another debtor who has okay. extensive interests in the UK, and there was a risk identified in relation yep. to Brexit in that paper because David Cameron had just announced the okay. referendum. Fine. Remind me, the next time you're going gambling, I'll go for advice from you. Um, <laughs> In relation to this, well, Wal this Walter Mitty type of character, um, uh, Mr. Koshnahan, who um, uh, uh, appears obviously quite considerably in the documentation, um, did NAMA ever enforce any of the six to seven debtors, enforce on any of the six to seven debtors that Mr. Koshnahan yes. was? Yes, we did. How many? Uh, two, Part, two, parts. two parts. Part, two parts. Part uh, enforcement when? on two of those debtors. When? Oh. 2012 and were they significant players of the six to seven? As regards to the six or seven, he declared yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, in relation to Mr. Kushnahan, did he submit a statement of interest to yourselves on an annual basis as, requir as required under the 2009 Code of Conduct, or, uh, or Code of Governance in relation to state bodies? Did he, he did, do it yes. each, did he do it each year? He did, yes. He did it each year from 2010. And did you, as chair, to did you as chair ensure that all procedures in place to protect as regards conflict of interest under that code, under section 2.6, 2.7 and 5.5 were adhered to? I did, absolutely, in conjunction You're with You're absolutely the, satisfied? In, in did you refer back to the compliance division in, in uh, the NTMA at all times? And each year, because it's a requirement of our compliance provision. So you're absolutely, I just need to move on quickly. I just need on the record, you, you're 100 per cent. Okay, we can come back to that if needs be. Um, in relation to um, the department uh, and your liaison with the Department of, um, of, uh, of uh, Finance, when did you tell the Department of Finance in relation to uh, the success fees and PIMCO? In relation to the uh, – I told them on the 13th of March did after – our board meeting that day that ended probably about five or six. Did you ask them for any advice subsequently? No. Did they offer it any was, advice subsequently? No, they didn't. It was by way of information. Did you, uh, was there surprise? There was. Uh, they was were there shock? Shock, appalled at the idea that somebody who had been on the NIAC would be in line for a success fee. Yes. And did you, did, you, did you feel, and this is subjective, I accept, did you feel that as a result of that, uh, that, um, uh, that the department would be taking action as a result or would be, um, would be referencing that into the future? In other words, it would feed into the political context of, of the department. Um, I would presume that it, it would – I didn't get any specific indication of that, okay. but I mean it would – In relation to – in relation to the same departments, um, did you have any uh, conversations um, – and this can be a yes-no answer – did you have any conversations in relation to uh, the CNAG and the standards of expertise, staff, etc., uh, as a result of the engaging process over the four different uh, report versions that you uh, saw? Yes, we had discussions or we had engagement with the department because we were, I suppose, keeping them up to date on where this uh, report was going. They were, they were quite general discussions. Uh, we weren't seeking to influence the department in any way. So you had discussions in relation to expertise and competence of the CNAG? Yeah, we have a, a, is it a, monthly or a monthly meeting with the department and all ongoing issues in a general sense, are discussed. And did they, express, did they express any opinion that you'd like to elaborate us on? They expressed, uh, I suppose, quite a strong view uh, that they were surprised that the CNAG did not engage uh, this type of expertise. I think there would have been a, a agreement between us, or certainly the, our opinions would have been the same. Okay. Last question, and because also, I'm, I'm, near, I'm, near, I'm near the end. Um, in relation to Lazard, and, and we'll have to come back at this eventually, I find the whole role of Lazard uh, perplexing. Um, the fact that they got 4.3 million for a role that was very confined, and if you compare it to the other projects and the roles of a similar type of organisations, why were they not involved in portfolio evaluations and uh, the sales process? Why were they actually not asked? to be involved in that? And why afterwards were they 
not given all the information required to do an analysis of making sure that the integrity of the marketing and sales process and decision making thereon was as accurate as can be. In other words, really it is certainly from what I'm reading, my view, that in much of this there is seen to be rubber stamping a, a process. Deputy, um, first I'd say to you is that Lazarus don't rubber stamp anything. Um, Lazarus stood over the process and were engaged with the process and they were, they were told to by the board to Why weren't they briefed on the objective of the loan sale? They were briefed on the objective of the loan sale. In detail? Yes. Verbally? Yes. And, I mean, no we can't see any documentation to the well, there, well, there is a document, Deputy, which was available to the CNAG, which effectively, the way these things But it's not available to us? Well, it is available to you. There's no, I have no problem Has with it. Has anyone seen it? Well, you know, it will come up as part of the, 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 of, of the documents. It's, it's quite a generic document, which actually talks about uh, as part of the engagement with any investment bank or loan sale advisor, you have an engagement with them and they pitch to you, it's called a pitch book, in terms of uh, who they should target, the type of people, the buyers in the market, they sort of uh, tier them between Division 1 buyers, Division 2 buyers, Division 3 buyers. Sounds like uh, soccer, uh, what? So, so all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, that's, that was there. Well, there, was a, there was a meeting and they, uh, and they came back and emailed for us, back. For us, for us, for us studying this uh, as part of this committee, there is no documentary ever, evidence to show this. And that's, for us, a, a problem. One last question, because I know I'm out of time, Chair, and I have to be fair. Um, Fortress met it to the end, but they were not uh, involved uh, in the first or second call. The Chair has eloquently said that basically everyone who could almost, well, 80 per cent, um, were invited to uh, look into this, uh, uh, our bidding, this bidding process. But they weren't asked on the first or second occasion. If it was so exhaustive and so accurate, why weren't they in the first or second call? But Deputy Fortis giant were invited to join the process at the same time service were invited to join the process. I so, know, that's not my so, question. So my question, my answer to you is that Lazarus advised us to approach... Lazarus? Lazarus, uh -huh. yeah. Lazard. Lazarus, whatever, I'm from Kerry, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, right. Uh, 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 advise us in terms